Okay, well, then we've talked about uh, screening. We've talked about metastatic disease. What about the area of uh, locally advanced uh, cervical cancer within the uh, pelvis? For some time now, concurrent chemoradiation has been our standard of care. Any, any recent information that would alter that? Well, I think it's immuno-oncology. We've already talked about it. And cervical cancer, we said it's HPV-related, and clearly immune surveillance and immune therapy is an opportunity here. So actually presented at last year's um, ASCO was this idea of using an immunotherapy against the HPV virus in these locally advanced or, or metastatic cases. And probably the leading candidate is this Listeria, um, uh, uh, Advaxis 01-11, which where the HPV antigens are loaded into the Listeria and it's used as a vector to help immunize the patient to help develop T cells and, 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 and cytotoxic. There's also a, a poster at this year's ASCO meeting regarding a PARP inhibitor oh, in yeah, cervical yeah. cancer there you go. that had activity. In combination, in with, combination chemotherapy. with chemotherapy, yes. Because the P53 causes genetic instability like, right. like, like another, bracket dysfunction. It's another right. contextual so another, lethality right. issue. And, and not surprising about. you use it with a DNA damaging agent, agent to your point. Uh -huh. Like platinum. Right. Two, two good opportunities. Yeah. All right, so in the, uh, in the uh, area of the locally advanced disease, uh, what's the regimen of choice for that group of patients? Well, I think, you know, at least in the U.S., uh, we still approach these patients with chemoradiation. And I think um, the, the options after chemoradiation is whether or not to give concurrent adjuvant chemotherapy, which has been studied by the GOG and others. But globally, there's been other approaches, certainly in the, in the 2B category, um, the idea of using, um, uh, since these tumors are chemosensitive, by using induction or neoadjuvant chemotherapy prior to surgery or radiation therapy. And there are several, you know, traditional um, studies, randomized trials have been done, the Italians have done one, um, that suggested that there may be a, a benefit to doing it, to doing neoadjuvant um, uh, chemotherapy followed by surgery, or neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by radiation, chemoradiation followed by surgery. So, so these types of um, uh, options are being practiced uh, globally. But not here. But not here, and it, I would say that, you know, our attempt at it um, was, was not a very positive one. So um, I believe it was GOG 141, where we did uh, two uh, cycles of uh, vincristine and cisplatinum, and the intent was to see whether or not, uh, followed by raclosterectomy, and we, the intent was to see if we could get better margin, negative, a higher frequency of negative margins, uh, and lower use of adjuvant rate post-operative um, chemoradiation. So far, we saw neither of right. those and closed the trial. So if our audience sees a cancer that's too big to cut out, yeah. they're going to give chemotherapy and radiation, and the chemotherapy is cisplatin. Right. And it's cisplatin weekly for about six doses, mm -hmm. 40 milligrams per square meter, okay? 70 milligrams max. So yeah, you could cap it at 70 milligrams because 40 is pretty high. And then we radiate the pelvis generally if it's limited to the pelvis. Right. And importantly, brachytherapy. Right. So these patients are very difficult to, to cure if the brachytherapy is, is, is excluded. And the brachytherapy takes an extra level of, of expertise. Correct. So it would be okay to refer the patient early because if you prolong the treatment, then the cure rates also go down. Right. I was going to say that. to compress it, but you right. could refer the patient out for brachytherapy. So geometry is very important to, uh, to the use of um, brachytherapy and, and the radiation oncologists would like to to be involved early on because sometimes the brachytherapy is actually inserted when it's the best, uh, the opportune time to during get the external geometry, during the external beam. Right. Right. Well, without getting into too much detail about the te technical aspects uh, of the radiotherapy, it was mentioned earlier about, uh, first of all, that, uh, Dr. Monk has mentioned that single agent cisplatin is the regimen of choice. Uh, combinations are currently under study. But we don't have any evidence that a combination of drugs is better than single agent cisplatin in combination with radiation, correct? Everybody right. agree with yeah. that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, and uh, is there any role for adjuvant chemotherapy following completion of that? Yeah, I think it's still, it's still a research question. Um, we did, um, in, you know, we have done that in the GOG. The lining, if you look at the measure of, of um, benefit on overall survival, it looked to be in line, so we don't know. But there is this question of whether or not there are distant metastases that could be potentially covered by the use of an adjuvant. In, in fact, I hate the word radiosensitizing chemotherapy because the chemotherapy not only it's improves systemic. local control, but it's, it's, it's it, it reduces distant failure. But yeah. I think the question that you're alluding to is the Outback trial 
And yes. that yes. should hopefully com be yeah. completed this year with enrollment. Yeah. Right. And that, that's an international trial. In fact, uh, you want to describe it, uh, Farms? It, it's just what we talked about, chemotherapy and radiation versus randomization to three additional cycles of carboplatin paclitaxel, Correct. what you call adjuvant. adjuvant. Who knows if it works, but right. we, we'll, we're figuring it out. Yep. And I think it's important to note that uh, that approach is based on data that were presented in 2009 by, I believe, the Argentinian group. Duanus Gonzalez. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, uh, that, uh, with that looked at gemcitabine yeah, uh, so platinum right. combination right. as uh, adjuvant chemotherapy, mm -hmm. yeah. suggesting an advantage for adding the adjuvant chemotherapy but needing confirmation, yep. correct? Exactly. Okay, uh, anybody have anything else to add then to uh, the discussion of cervix cancer? Just one thing. I right. really like this abstract that was presented today in the poster presentation. Right. And it was a French study, a Centicol 2, which evaluated sentinel lymph node biopsy versus sentinel lymph node biopsy and pelvic lymph node dissection. It was done in a randomized fashion. And this was a very important question that we all discussed at SGO in terms of how much do we really know about sentinel lymph node dissection? Does it really decrease lymphedema? Does it really decrease complications? And this study demonstrated that there was a decrease in lymphatic complications as well as a decrease in uh, grade three and four complications and decreased neuropathy issues with sentinel lymph node biopsy approach. And really interesting, in the group that had sentinel lymph node biopsy and a pelvic lymph node dissection, there were no false negatives. Right, so maybe we should describe a little bit what that what is what sentinel node mapping is. I mean, I think many surgeons know know it well because of their use in breast cancer and melanoma. But this the concept is is that the that there's that the lymphatic drainage from an, any organ is actually unambiguous, that there is a preferred route, and that preferred route can be identified. And so what we've used is a number of different imaging agents, uh, dyes and and radiocolloid to identify what is the preferred node, and in the cervix. Um, that there's two sides to deal with. So it's really um, uh, quite important to be able to have good accuracy for both sides. So an, a, a, a sentinel node, which would be the, the first node in the chain that would be essentially turn um, positive um, for assessment, um, if you don't find it, it's an, it's an invaluable I event. And so you're left with having to do these types of procedures. So the success of lymph node um, mapping Finding the, the sentinel node is actually a critical piece to this um, puzzle, and that is um, improving uh, with better um, techniques to identify the nodes. But, but I don't okay. want our listeners to think, oh, at ASCO there was a sentinel lymph node study in cervical <laughs> cancer which shows that it reduced complications, and that should be what all patients who have surgical management of cervical cancer. Uh, I don't think that, that we can make that leap well, yet. It's provocative. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, we had research meetings here today in Chicago, not today, but this meeting, and I think we, we value that, but we need a, a, a properly done randomized trial to answer well, that. Well, I'm sure we'll get survival outcomes from this study as mm -hmm. well. But it's not randomized. No, it is randomized. How it's long, randomized how sentinel many, lymph node yeah, biopsy how, versus, versus sentinel lymph node biopsy plus, plus pelvic and, lymph node And how many dissection. patients on the study? Oh, approximately 200, and it was 267, but some were not eligible, they were excluded. But that's so not nearly enough to answer the question with your right. so, lymph node yeah, yeah. positivity but, is the problem. But I that's think right. it'll be, but I think the fact that there are no false negatives is really important. And Small if you numbers. look back and say, you know, some people say, well, there's a therapeutic benefit to doing a pelvic lymph node dissection. Mm. That's really based on very, very old data um, and extrapolated from Halstead's data in breast cancer. Right. So let's talk about Good that discussion. clinical trial And, and you know what, yeah. I guess <laughs> the other caveat here is, you know, if we're moving into the world of immunotherapy, you know, there's all about the tumor microenvironment, but there's also this, this a concept about the macroenvironment as well. And so the dendritic cells um, and the antigen pre presentation in the regional lymph nodes may be actually important. Yeah, so maybe. taking them all out may not be actually beneficial. Well, okay. it dovetails into a whole other initiative, and that's oncofertility with cervical okay. cancer. And, and I just, I, I think it's great in, in proper selection and proper execution, radical trachelectomies and so forth, to be able to save women's fertility is, is something that is a tremendously valuable initiative. However, I do think we need to be really careful with both sentinel nodes and overdoing it with oncofertility in terms of pushing it to the limits because you get one shot at curing cervical cancer. These are young women, and if you miss and they recur, you're either looking at a dreadful operation for potential cure or you're looking at an incurable disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we could then, uh, our time is just about up. Let's try to summarize what we've said about cervix cancer. And if anybody disagrees, please speak up. But, uh, <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, for metastatic cervix cancer, I think we've all agreed that at least the evidence-based uh, standard currently is a combination of paclitaxel, cisplatin, and bevacizumab with the caveats that were discussed. For uh, locally advanced cervical cancer, usually 
stage 1B2 through 4A uh, that is confined to the pelvis. Uh, concurrent chemo radiation with weekly cisplatin plus radiation is the current standard with uh, there uh, being an ongoing effort internationally to look at the role of combination chemotherapy and also adjuvant chemotherapy following that treatment. In the area of vaccines, we have some exciting information about vaccines and the big problem I think everybody outlined was lack of uptake currently uh, in that area. Uh, anybody have anything else that I missed in so summer? In the, in the small tumors that are amenable to surgery, right. sentinel lymphadenectomy, lymph, sentinel lymph, lymph node, node. Uh -huh. is an emerging concept. Okay, but not, not yet ready for prime time routine well, I, surgery. I don't know if, care. is that, do you do sentinel know. lymph I nodes? I do. We do. I'm yeah, ready for see? prime time. So it's, it's emerging. Right. It's emerging. It's, okay, uh, <laughs> could you it's define emerging? <laughs> well, it's emerging, it's emerging. emerging. means they do it, don't. he doesn't, and I'm thinking about it. <laughs> that's what emerging means. Okay, that's emerging. Okay, all right. <laughs>